as we are joined by the fedora wearing John Hudson and the unbiased UFO report as we look into the week's UFO stories that are happening around the world. Mr. John, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good, man. Yourself? How are things? I'm a little freaked out after hearing Jacob Rice's story of a black-eyed kid encounter at his front gate. I don't know, man. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't doubt by any means what he saw. I just, I highly question exactly what it is that he interacted with. I'm, I'm, I'm super curious. I don't know, that, man. That's, that's a weird one. I mean, the fact that he had a camera on his gate and the camera picked up him and his dogs, but not the little boy that he was looking at. That's just creepy, man. So, th that so that, so that, that's actually an example of footage that really, really, really needs to be analyzed. Because one, is there any chance that there's any other angles that was taken in any way, shape, or form? But more importantly, is there anything you can glean from that video? Because if you actually have, I mean, if there's any amount of interaction going on by the other members of that video that are seen. That, that really like seriously infer that they're acting, they're interacting with, a, with an, a, another individual that is clearly not there. I mean, I, I mean that's essentially proof of, of invisibility um, at a biological level or some sort. I mean, that's, that's, that by itself is a, a landslide of information. So I don't, uh, to me, like that, that, that needs to be investigated further. Well, all I can say is you and Jacob need to have one of your geeked out weirdo conversations in order to, to have that. Because, I mean, this guy here, he is on the ball when it comes to technology. That is for sure. Yeah, Very yeah, I was, I was, I was, yeah I, was, I was actually, I was a little surprised and impressed by him. So, yeah, so I, I agree. It's someone I want to talk to because I think, I think, I think our brains are, are flowing at kind of a similar, similar speed. So might be, might be a lot of fun to talk to him. Absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. What do you what do you got for us tonight? Let's take a little peeky poo here. What do you mean by UFO coaxing? What's going on? Oh, here? you ruined it. I was going to say, oh, I got nothing, Dave. I've just been sitting around playing video games. Um, uh, and and then you you ruined my you ruined my joke. Um, so uh, so this is creepy. So so first off, I mean, um, you know, I, I don't know, and Dave, maybe you can answer this for me, but. I don't know how much anyone should really read into where articles get published, right? I mean, in, in the in the in the science world, like where where a paper gets published, unfortunately, does mean something. Uh, in the I don't know how much it means. So the fact that, for example, this article um, is is basically on Medium, right? So it's just basically someone writing. I, I have no idea what that what that does to the credibility of the article, but everything that the article touches on is stuff that we have been completely aware of. And what this article is an example of, and the next article is as well, and this is kind of a theme for the for tonight's show, is these are examples of things where normal reporters, like real, like journalist type folks, you know, like Dave, I think you've met one or two in your life, haven't you? I, I'm not sure, but um, but you know, but folks like that stopping and taking a double take and going, WTF? Like, w no one's followed up on this? Like, how can no one have followed up on this? I mean, I've, I've seen that exact reaction from you, Dave. I mean, that pers like per it's almost like you guys all learned it in school. It's funny. And so, so here, here he calls out the bombshell. He says, in 2016, a formal operations plan to address UAP was drafted and submitted through the alternative Com uh, cons uh, cons <laughs> sorry, uh, the ACC um, um, uh, channels at the DOD. Two persons, I and Tim McMillan, spoke with hinted at that a portion of the operations plan may have involved attempts to coax the UAPs into showing up, potentially involving the object propensity for showing an interest in nuclear material. Now, According to this limited follow-up that has been done has been met with 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 doors and walls because essentially it, this is nuclear material in some cases. This is all even if it wasn't involving coaxing UFOs to be top secret. But think about this: what this is implying is that we are intentionally taking radioactive material and taking it places and going here, kitty, 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 kitty. 
kitty kitty. And I, you know, honestly, personally, I think it's a brilliant, I love that idea, but I got to say like, those are usually ideas that I like that everyone else doesn't. So I'm be very highly doubtful whether the whole public would support this method. Okay. So with this coaxing of UFOs, I mean, what's the difference between what they're writing about coaxing and people who claim to be able to summon craft? Um, the resolution of crazy. I don't know. I don't know, Dave. Like, I don't know. Like, that's a hard one, right? Because I mean, the thing is, is it, is it, is it, it it's not to say that it, I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm not saying that it's not, there's lots of different ways to do it. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be doing it. I actually think it's really cool that they're doing it. However, the very fact that they are so confident in the existence of this other that they are applying different techniques for coaxing it out of the wild as if it's an animal that that takes this to a a, a whole new level in my opinion and it, i felt that way since i first read that and it's always bugged me and i i'm was just, i was very happy to read this article do you want or, or do you think we need more study on this on a scientific level? Is there uh, people working on that? I, I, I think that there's actually uh, quite possibly there's adequate research going on on that on the DOD side. Um, I would say on the private side, um, there isn't as much as I would like. There is some. There needs to be more. However, I think that um, I think that coaxing. I think. I think. I think the very concept in a, in a in a village of any one member of that village uh, trying to reach out to a highly advanced species and and communicate with them perhaps should be done with some coordination with the rest of the village. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like I, I don't know. It's like to me, it just seems like 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 you know, taunting the I don't know, like just. You know what I'm saying? I, to me, well, it's, it, it's, well, it's, it's I do know. I, I do know where you're going with this, and the problem that we have here is when it comes to topics like summoning UFOs, which some people believe that they can do. How do you study the phenomena? Number one, but number two, science doesn't want to at this time investigate woo. They think is, it's quite beneath them. And correct. that isn't the fault of science. That isn't a fault of science. It's just that we haven't advanced science to the point where that type of, and that level of consciousness may be something that needs to be looked at on a more mainstream level. So I can understand why there isn't a lot of scientific data looking in on this. Oh, 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 for, for sure, for sure. But the thing is, is that what this implies is that this had been part of the operational procedures for some time and no one followed up on it. And that's, that's, that's kind of crazy to me because the thing is, is it, is it, we don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I agree with what you're saying, but like, we don't, I mean, one, just the very fact that, the, that they believe that there are coaxing methods that exists. Are, is, is an astounding is an astounding thing to admit right just point blank. right that is just an astounding thing to admit and i do think that there's some interesting work being done on this because um and you know and and if if you know if he said this in mistake i i apologize but it was um it was um um uh, michael hall that mentioned that um when he was working with the um, uh, UAP, uh, UAPX folks, that uh, that he'd caught wind of of some situation where they had played a whale song, and they'd actually gotten a reaction from it. Uh, something showed up, and they got it on camera. And he wouldn't tell me anything more than that. He told he told it on the air, so it wasn't like anything you know in private or anything like that. And he's a lawyer, so I'm assuming he knew what he was doing. And um and the thing is is that that that's a private those i mean yeah those are former military but that's those are private citizens doing it on private money and if and we'll find out you know i know they have their all their ndas for all the stuff but if that's true holy smokes 
I mean, one, wow, and two, Star Trek Four, right? Like, who would have guessed it, right? Like, whale song, like crazy. No, it, it's just the way it goes, man. I mean, we we must be looking into at least those in the dark side of science. And I don't mean dark as in bad, but in the Black Ops project, must be looking for some sort of consciousness signal that is bringing them in. Oh, absolutely. And the thing is, is it, is it, is it even on the flip side of it, even on the CE5 side of it, yes, I, I understand the, 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 the disenchanting with Wu, but the thing is, is that if, if you have someone that can do some, you know, interpretive dance and, and get some effect in the sky to happen, and like, it, I'll be nice. Let's say that they get it to happen 70% of the time. 70% of the time, Bob does his little dance, something happens in the sky. That's actually repeatable. That's something that you can study. That's replicatable. That's a good thing. So it's to, to me, it's kind of ironic and beautiful that some, we have something that's actually potentially replicatable and, and, and might lend itself to science, but it's wrapped in this incredibly fluffy package of woo with, with Stephen Greer sitting on top with a big grin on his face. Of course. And nobody wants to admit that the woo has potential. Nobody well, wants to is, admit. Yeah, we well, agreed. And and the thing is, is that but anyone who's been doing any research will see that that much of what Stephen Greer has done has been to to kind of Disneyfy a process that has been floating around humans for thousands of years. Very true. All right, let's get to these white blobs. What do white yeah. blobs? Do? With UFOs, man, I, I got to say, like this is this is um, you know this is this is uh, this is a little somber, you know, and um, and um, you know it's it's but it's it's something that needs to be talked about, and basically once again, it, it's another beautiful example, and it's another it's another writer basically saying, look, this just came out, and none of you all did a damn thing with it. What the hell's wrong with you? Like this is serious, you know. And I mean that's essentially the whole the whole um, uh, tone of the of the of the article. But once again, it's it's on a, off a website called Unknown Boundaries. You know, I have no idea what kind of readership it's going to get. But what it does is it calls out specifically some very important things. Like it says, okay, it talks specifically about the fact that Dr. Gary Nolan got involved and got involved. And in, oh, let me give you a brief brief synopsis. I'm I apologize. Sorry, this this story actually really bothers me. So the whole synopsis is, is that there have been uh, documented cases where pilots who have had um, close encounters with the others, that some of them have received um, brain damage that uh, looks like white blobs under an MRI and essentially um, is areas of the brain that have died and so the immune system is attacking it and, and, and basically recycling the material. And, um, and so this is something you'll see in some other very unfortunate de degenerative diseases. And so this is a, a pretty scary thing to be talking about. And the idea that, that some percentage of, of pilots that have, have, have been in proximity have seen this and that enough of them have seen it that the government has actually reached out to Dr. Gary Nolan to actually look into this. Um, that's, you know, and it's, it's not to say that this is, to anyone, to anyone who's been in this field for a long time, this isn't shocking. I mean, I, I take it back. It's a little bit shocking. But it's not shocking that, that someone or anyone has gotten harmed by being in the proximity of, of something else, right? I mean, we've, we've all, we all cut our teeth on Rendlesham, right? We all know the whole story. We all know that, that, that you know, Burroughs was damaged, right? That he had, a, that, you know, his heart was in trouble. So we know that this happens. But to me, the fact that it's this blatant and it's this in your face, to me, is shocking, and evidently is to this writer as well. And and basically, what he what he says is that you know that they uh, he investigated approximately 100 patients, mostly um, defense or government personnel or people working in the aerospace industry, and that um, he was um, his involvement with UAPs began after he was asked to use his blood analysis instrumentation, once again, Gary with his special machines, to help with the case of pilots who were receiving brain damage. When asked if and when asked if it could be if he could describe 
the more abnormal effects the brain observed with the MRIs, Nolan said, if you ever looked at the MRI of someone with multiple sclerosis, there's something called white matter disease. It's scarring. I mean, that's, that's, that's really unfortunate stuff. Um, but what's really interesting is, is it, is it, you know, what you have here is you have a, a another case. And I mean, once again, we're not talking about a, a huge number of people, right? Every one of them is important, but what I'm, my point I'm trying to make is it's not like this, you know, I mean, it's like nowhere near what we've seen with, with some other conditions, right? I mean, no, Dr. Gary Nolan's reviewed a hundred patients. Some percentage of those have been, have been infected, but essentially what you have is you have a, a real documented effect of pilots, some pilots who have had an interaction after that interaction, they result in some level of brain damage and that's a big freaking deal and it's something that like should be discussed in a much larger forum than i mean you know nothing against us but space dot radio well i mean if this is happening again with with where we're getting you know images on mri of some of the the results i mean how do we turn this into a into a, a study to try and pr prove that it's happening. Well, I mean, I think, on, on, well, I mean, I, I think right now th there's no doubt that it's happening. What, what's probably in, in doubt by most researchers is, is what the, what the catalyst for the effect is, what the source of the effect is. Um, however, um, you know, if, if these are military people, they they have their they know where they are all the time, <laughs> so it's pretty easy to determine exactly where someone was once they started seeing those effects. And so it's it's much easier when you're dealing with a military patient to actually tie a specific location and time to an event than it is with the civilian. So that is possible. But yeah, I agree. It'd be challenging. You know, I, I'm just curious. You know, if this happened to to these people. What would be the results be on somebody like a Samantha Mowat or a Chris Bledsoe? Or would it be nothing? Does it depend on the type of being or well, the I mean, type of craft? I mean, that's the th that's the problem. Is that, is it they don't they don't we don't see this universally. We don't see this from every pilot. Obviously, mm -hmm. we don't. Right? Fravor's okay. But hold on a second here. There is DNA evidence. From the Stefan Mikulik case at Falcon Lake here from 1967. Hmm. I wonder. Yeah, I, that's a that's an interesting point. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's just and you know and the thing the thing that's very disturbing is that is that. Um, look, it, it's clear that, that however this is happening, it's not intentional, right? Um, because if you, if, if, if you were to try to design a weapon, this isn't how you do it, right? I mean, this is, this is obviously some sort of a, of a weird side effect, um, from some sort of technology or some sort of procedure or operation that, that doesn't harm them, that does harm us. And, you know, I, I just, I, to me, it just it, it also brings up the the other kind of. God, it's not like there's even one elephant in the room. It's like we have a whole pack of elephants in the room. Um, it, it, it you know it brings up this whole issue of why are some of these people healed and some of them aren't. I don't to know. Me, that's, a, that's another big story. That's, that's another one of these big stories that that someone should be you know two or three people should be sinking you know ten years of their life into and no one's doing it. It's driving me nuts. Well, the other big question too is. I mean, if they are assuming that death has occurred in certain cases regarding this, it would really, really be intriguing to see how many pilots have died from these encounters. I mean, these are statistics, John, that will be locked up for centuries. I know, but but Dave, I got I got to ask you, and and you know, you can be as 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 indirect as as you'd like because I'm going to be as well as. Is is 
I know I've seen one of those MRIs. And I assume that you've seen something similar. And it it's disturbing. It's it 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 it's not a nice thing to look at. It's it's very hard to look at that and think that 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 brain was healthy before it interacted with that with that with that whatever it was. It, well, well, I mean, I've looked at studies with when I was in sports radio with CTE. Oh yeah, yeah and, there you go. And, and concussions. Yeah. Now yeah, there you go. Yep, perfect example. Now I mean, seeing the brain activity in young men who played professional contact sports, whether it's boxing, hockey, football being the, and now mixed martial arts being the big four. I mean, seeing the brains in these yeah. men That's is a perfect example. Yeah. I yeah. mean, That's it's because we do have cases of, of, of men who are, are beaten to a pulp for years and they're fine. Nothing yeah. happens. And then you got this other guy, that he, he, he gets four or five, Hundred concussions, which is I guess normal for whatever, and and he's but he's three years into it, and 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 suddenly a really nice person is is now threatening his wife. Yeah, that's horrible. Well, that's horrible I mean, on you, every angle, you look, you look at a lot of football players. Famous one, Junior Seau. You know, famously of the San Diego Chargers, who uh, had a murder suicide with his girlfriend, and then he turned the gun on himself. And when they did the study on his brain, his family donated his brain to a university in Massachusetts that's looking into the CTE. This is where they they noticed that, I mean, he had the brain of an 85, 90-year-old man with dementia. Yep. yep. And, and he, yep. Was, he wasn't even 50 years old. Yep. Yep. And so think about that. So now we have, we have, we have direct physical contact energy and we have some sort of field-based energy, both resulting in uh, not exactly the same, but somewhat similar sort of brain damage, right? I mean, it's it's um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's just and brain damage is just such a serious thing. And the and the thing is, is that you know this isn't the first time that we've had brain damage tip into the world of the paranormal. In that there have been many times over the years that the cattle mutilation cattle mutil uh, mutilation uh, research has dovetailed into um, the um, mad cow disease um, uh, research. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if more military members come out with this. I mean, th this is a, John, this is a scary study. And, and let, me, let me say something really quick, Dave. What, my prediction, if I, if I had to, if someone asked me, what do you predict? What I predict is what happened is some number of years from now, whoever is doing this will figure it out and they'll go, oh, crap, I'm so sorry. And they'll fix it and it'll stop happening and we'll forget about it. It'll just suck between now and then. I really do believe something like that will happen. But between now and then, we got some work to do. I think the reason why this has been buried, John, is because we're not allowed to talk contact. Yeah. We're yeah. allowed to talk about the craft. We're allowed to talk UAP. We're not allowed to talk aliens. We're not allowed to talk contact. We're not allowed to talk a lot of things. All the AP stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. All, all, all the AP stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's true. And the thing is, is that to a certain degree, at, at some level, I, I endorse, I, I, I endorse the idea that, it's not a bad thing for people who are new to this field to get uh, to to kind of enjoy uh, several of the other deep wells of, of knowledge that you can go into in this field and, and research that for a couple of years before getting into some of these darker things because they are disturbing and some of them are very hard to deal with. And so if you if you haven't really developed a passion for for what you're researching, you could easily get um, you could easily get you know shoved off. Very true. Very true. You can get shoved off, but I mean, it doesn't mean that you you kill the research. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh my God! No, 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 no! I just mean that you could have people that just with their own mental health concerns might have to bow out and, and do something else for a living because it's it's just too hard to deal with. Um, but oh yes, my God! I mean, it's like no. I mean, this is a this is a desperate need, right? Because I mean, the thing is, is like I said, this is not a weapon. I mean, look, well, I take that back. If this is a weapon, the we are not dealing with an advanced life form. This is a very 
haphazard, silly way to kill people, right? So it's a, it's obviously a, 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 a side effect. We just need to figure out what it is and get them to fix it or fix it ourselves. It should be easy. If we were communicating, it would be. Well, that's a story, John, that I know you're going to be on top of when it comes down to ET contact, UFO contact, and the military. Somehow, I think this one here, though, my friend, is going to get swept way, way far under the rug yeah, that it I'm may afraid. never see the light of day again. Yeah, at least not for a long time. Yeah. That's true.